Okay, fifth graders, here is seven dash two, and it's talking about finding common denominators. And I hope you guys watched my video over the weekend. Um, so let's just take a look at this here. Uh, they're giving you another way to look at finding a common denominator visually. So here's a rectangle divided into thirds, and here's a rectangle divided up into fourths. And you can see that if they overlap the two, you get twelfths. How do I know it's twelfths? Well, there's twelve little boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And the fractions one-third and one-fourth can be renamed with equivalent fractions. One-third is the same as four-twelfths, and one-fourth is the same as three-twelfths. So fractions that have the same denominator, such as four twelfths and three twelfths, are said to have common denominators. When the denominator, the bottom part, twelve, when those are the same. So let's take a look here at the convince me. It says uh, draw rectangles such as the ones above to find um, equivalent fractions to two fifths and one third that have the same denominator. Okay, so well let's draw um, five lines here. One, two, three. Four, Four, five, okay. Um, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have to do one more here, okay. So six lines. All right. So um, I can represent two fifths by shading in two of these, but we're not done here. We need to do thirds now. We have a five, one, two, three, four, five, and now thirds. So I'm gonna go diagonally this way. That was a little bit too narrow, but I think you guys get the idea. Okay. So now it's also divided up into thirds going horizontally okay so um so how many boxes we have here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so the common denominator would be fifteen now i can do it also this way i could do two fifths and uh, let's say i'm adding one third What's the common denominator? What's the number that both three and five would go into evenly? It is 15. Three goes into 15 five times, times one is five. Five goes into 15 three times, times two is six. Add it up and we get 11 fifteenths. Okay. Um, so we weren't even adding there. I mean, we, I didn't need to go that extra step. We were just finding the common denominator. So this is, this is a way to do it visually if that helps you. The other way is just to think, you know, line them up vertically and come up with a number that they both would go into. Um, and another example on the top of page 275, uh, you're writing uh, multiply the denominators to find a common denominator, three times six. So three and six. And so you could do that. If we were looking for a common denominator for three and six, and you, you couldn't think of one, just multiply the two common denominators together and you'll get one. Um, I'm gonna go back over here to this example here. Multiply five and three, what do you get? You get 15, so there's the common denominator. Now, that's a, that's a nice shortcut and you could do it that way, but sometimes it's not the smallest denominator. But for our purposes, it works. Another way is use the fact that one denominator is a multiple of the other. So in other words, look at this. Three goes into six and six goes into itself. So another denominator would also be six. Let me show you something here. Look, here's two thirds. And here's five sixths. I'm going to do it both ways, all right? And let's just say I'm going to add them. Let's just do it simple here. All right, the first way is to multiply the two together. What's three times six? That's 18. So 18 is a common denominator. Look, so three goes into 18 six times. Six times two is 12. Six goes into 18 three times. Three times five is 15. Add them up. 12 and 15 is 27, so 27 over 18. Now, let's do it the other way, another way. Two, 
thirds, five sixths. Okay? Say I'm adding them up. So does three go into six? It does. And does six certainly goes into itself. So we can use six as a common denominator. Three goes into six twice, and two times two is four. Six goes into six once, and one times five is five. Add them up, what do we get here? We get nine sixths. All right. Now, look at this here for a moment. Um, how many times does nine go into 27? Um, it goes in four times. How many times does nine go into 18? It goes in twice. Actually, nine, 27, three times, my bad. I, I knew I was doing something wrong there. Three times, okay? So this, that's, it's an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator, but we reduced it down as far as we can, and it's three over two. Now look at this here. Um, how many times does three go into nine? Three times. How many times does three go into six? Three times. Look at that. Three over two, three over two. It's the same answer, but we use different methods. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. And that was that was a, a hard one, kind of above what you guys are going to be doing here right away. Eventually, they'll get a little more difficult. So let's look at a couple of these together, and then we'll do the next page, and it'll be the end of the video. I don't want to make these too long. Um, it says, find the common denominator for each pair of fractions, then write the equivalent fractions with the common denominator. Okay, so I'm looking at number four. And it's two-fifths and one-sixth. I need a number that both of the, the five and the six will go into. Well, let's do it the very, the very first way they showed us. What's six times five? That's 30. Okay. Six goes into 30 five times. Five times one is five. Five goes into 30 six times. Six times two is 12. So rewrite them uh, with equivalent fractions. So this would then be 12 over 30 and five over 30. So there's number four done for you, okay? Um, looking, let's see here. I think you guys can do those. That shouldn't be too difficult. Let's look at the last page, the problem solving page. Because I don't want to make these videos too long. I'm not sure they're going to, they'll start causing problems here. Um... So explain any mistakes in the renaming of the fractions below. Show the correct renaming. So that kind of tells me there probably is a mistake there somewhere. Three goes into nine three times. Four goes into 12 three times. That works. Two goes into six three times. Three goes into 12. Oh, that's, that's four times. Um, so um, this one should be, um, if two goes into six three times, then three goes into, or three goes into 12, four times. It should be the same amount for each one. Um, so show the correct renaming. Um, So, so two thirds, I'm trying to think if I can explain this a little differently. Two thirds, um, if I multiplied each one by three, it would be six ninths. Yeah, so three fourths here, this one is correct. If three times three, times three is nine and three times four is 12, so that one is correct. This one is not. Um, 
Number 13, higher order thinking for keeping records, business records every three months of a year is called a quarter because there's four quarters in a year. How many months are equal to three quarters of a year? Yeah, I'll let you guys answer that one. Think about it. Try number 14 on your own. Looking at number 15, number cents. What is the price of premium gasoline rounded to the nearest dollar? So the nearest dollar, the nearest whole dollar, that's going to be the ones place. Um, rounded to the nearest dime. Oh, so we're going to do several kinds of rounding here. So first, what is the price of premium gasoline rounded to the nearest dollar? Here's premium, nearest dollar. Is the next number to the right, which is just the first number after the decimal, is that a five or larger? No. So premium. Um, the first one would be rounded to the nearest dollar would be four. Four dollars. And then, then it says rounded to the nearest dime. Um, so that would be um, four dollars and what? Uh, four point four. Four dollars and forty cents. Because look, this four here, we're rounding that one. Is this a five or larger? The zero? No. So it stays the same. And then rounded to the nearest penny. Oh, I did that backwards. Uh, rounded to the nearest dollar, rounded to the nearest dime. That threw me. So the nearest penny would be, um, this would be the, this would be the penny. Um, 4.4. .4. Um, And then this one, my brain is going dead on me here. Round to the nearest dime. That would be, is that the same? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I am not gonna end this video and redo it here. All right, uh, okay, round to the nearest dime. This is, that's the tenths and then the hundredths. Nearest penny. So it'd be 41. 4.1. I think I have that right. I'll find out when I go look <laughs> later <laughs> when my brain is working better. All right, look at that. I did number 15 for you. Okay. <laughs> Choose all the numbers that could be common denominators for um, two thirds and three quarters. So you're looking for a common denominator for three and four. Same thing, choose all the numbers that could be a common denominators for 11 twelfths and four fifths. So looking for a common denominator for 12 and five. All right. Okay, that's it. Um, how long is this video? Oh man, longer than I wanted. It's 13 minutes, almost 14 minutes. I'm gonna end this and um, I will see you guys Monday.